Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to take a look at the bird from GDU, the Global Drone Union. To keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Also, I'd like to send a quick shout out to our friends on the Emerald Isle at Copter Shop Ireland. So the first thing we find is the drone itself. And it looks kind of like a DJI Mavic on steroids. It folds down into this very compact shape, and it includes this big clip here, which holds it all together during transport. I'm gonna hang on to this and use it when I wanna carry this drone in a backpack. The limbs fold out and snap into position. And so does the undercarriage. Fully deployed, this is a good-sized aircraft. It's 660 millimeters across, and the landing struts provide plenty of ground clearance for a three-axis gimbal. It feels lightweight for its size, but it's sturdy enough I'm not gonna worry about it falling apart. On the belly of the aircraft, we have an optical flow sensor to help with position hold, as well as an ultrasonic sensor to maintain the height at low altitude. Here are the orientation and status lights. On top, we have the battery compartment, as well as the power button and the LED battery indicator. The bird comes with these folding propellers already attached, like the Mavic or the Unique Breeze. They're 12 inches across, GDU claims a 29 minute flight time. We'll see about that during our flight endurance test. And here we have a tray with some paperwork, along with some other accessories. We'll go ahead and come back to these in a minute. Here's the radio. The radio is compact and it feels pretty good in the hand, nice and solid. It's got this little handle on the back, which folds out and you can use it as a stand. When you're ready to go flying, just flip up these two antennas on the back. Both sticks spring to the center in both axes. Below the sticks, we have three buttons, automatic takeoff, the power button for the radio, and return to home. Below these buttons, we have a battery indicator, which reflects the condition of the battery on board the aircraft rather than the radio itself. On the left shoulder of the radio, we have a knob that controls the yaw of the camera gimbal, which seems like kind of an odd choice on an aircraft with a fixed undercarriage. We also have a switch that controls the flight mode and a button for taking still images. On the right shoulder, we have another knob that controls camera pitch, a button to start recording video, and a button which recenters the gimbal. We also have these two buttons on the back, which you can assign custom functions. Along with the radio, you get this holder for your tablet or smartphone. Inside this heavily padded case, we have the three-axis gimbal. It's a pretty refined looking design with nice heft. A lot of these components are made out of metal. This is a 4K camera. GDU also makes an HD camera and a GoPro compatible gimbal. And they're promising a thermal imaging camera soon, so stay tuned for that. The Bird uses a proprietary cartridge style battery. It's four cells with a capacity of 6,700 milliamp hours. Let's take a look at the paperwork. We have a packing list, a first flight guide, a fast advanced guide, an after sales service manual, battery safety guidelines, disclaimers, and stickers. Here we have the accessories. We've got the battery charger, a full set of spare propellers, an AC power cable, an extra set of vibration dampers, an A to micro B USB cable, a 32 gigabyte Samsung micro SD card, a payload container for the built-in drop mechanism, and a lanyard for the radio. This is actually the best radio lanyard I've ever seen. It's nice and plush, and that can make a real difference if you're out flying for an extended period of time. Let's get the aircraft ready to fly. We'll begin by inserting the micro SD card into the gimbal. Installing the gimbal itself is very easy. Just insert the tab into the slot at the front of the aircraft, and then use the spring-loaded connector at the back to lock it into place. 
Always remove the gimbal holder before you power up the aircraft or you risk damaging the gimbal motors. Next, we install the battery. Align the connectors and then press firmly down to seat. To set up the radio, mount the holder for your smart device. To remove this holder, you need to press this button. The app is available for both Android and iOS devices. However, to find it for iOS, I had to use GDU's previous name, ProDrone Technology. Nothing showed up when I typed in GDU Bird. To power up the radio, press and hold the power button for three seconds. Power up the aircraft and avoid the propellers in case they start spinning unexpectedly. Launch the Wi-Fi manager on your smart device. The name of the network and the password are printed on the back of your radio. Set up the connection and then launch the app. Then click on the big arrow to enable flight mode. After running a series of diagnostics, you'll see telemetry and live video from the aircraft. As you can see, there's a fair amount of latency in the video signal, so this is not going to be an appropriate platform for proximity flying. Around the edges of the screen, we have some additional controls as well as our telemetry indicators. On the left, we have buttons to enable auto takeoff, return to home, and follow me, as well as a mini map. Across the top, we have the GPS satellite count, Wi-Fi signal strength, controller battery, and drone battery. In the center, we have a connection status indicator. If you tap on that, it brings up the diagnostics for individual aircraft systems. On the right side, you can take still photos, record video, and adjust the camera settings. And we also have a heading indicator. So that was our unboxing and setup of the GDU Bird. In an upcoming episode, we're gonna take it out and see how it flies. Be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss that video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Fly safe. Can't touch it, just a little bit, just one little hand.